A short story by Paul McCann entitled Rob Dob Dob. A real pressure cooker, as how some people described him. A little terror of a kid he was. Others said he had a behavioural management problem. As a youngster, Robert was a real handful for his parents. He got used to the hand claps around his ears. In fact, he seemed immune to punishment. His teachers at school often ignored him in class. They said he was impossible to teach. He couldn't read or write well, and by the time he was leaving primary school, Robert had a huge chip on his shoulder. They said he was very well balanced because he had a chip on each shoulder, and he was tagged as a junior delinquent. Robert was told he would have a hard road ahead in life, and they said he would never get a steady job. I suppose no one reached Robert, a helping hand in all those years, and so people never really understood him. Although he was considered a hard case, the real truth of it was, Robert just needed some time to develop. Once he started secondary school, Robert's skill in woodwork and metalwork surfaced. Now, instead of being punished more times than anyone else, he was applauded and encouraged. Half of his problem was that he never knew how to apply himself to the academic side of school, but in the practical work, Robert was on top of the class. Basic skills was what he was very, very encouraged to work with at school, and he was able to help some other students who found it hard. And with this new identity... Robert soon found that he was a popular guy, instant kudos with a new circle of friends, and they called him Rab for short, and he was admired for his abilities. As he approached the end of his school years, Rab mapped out a future for himself. He had a idea that he could probably survive by buying a horse and cart from a traveller and painted a business sign on it that read Mobile Handyman. So before he could afford a van, Rob drove his horse and cart around the streets looking for odd jobs. He had a big brass bell that he rang so people would know he was coming. In his cart, he carried a wide variety of tools and odds and ends. Apart from sharpening scissors and knives, Rob fixed most household things. He healed shoes and polished copper and brass. He collected old rags and cut hedges. He mowed lawns, did some plumbing, and basically was your all-round do-anything man in the community. He was the local wake-up man as well, who called early and knocked your window in case you slept in for work. And while he was there, he would also wash your window if it was needed. Kids loved to hear the bell ring and followed Rob's cart from street to street. Sometimes he would give them a little toy in return for scooping up the horse dung left by the old grey mare. He bagged up the dung and he sold it as fertiliser for roses around the district. In an old shed on the low dock, Rob kept his horse and cart at night. And there in the upstairs of an old terrace house nearby in Sailor's Town, Belfast Rab dabbed away at night with his oil paints and his acrylics. Belfast Rab was a gifted man. No one had seen his canvases. Belfast Rab, the unknown masterpieces had lay for years, back to back on the landing where no one had ever seen them. Rob painted little faces of all the people that he seen during the day, the images and the lifestyles that he met along the way. And the images of Belfast City 
night after night were just stacked up against the wall. There was a new picture to paint each day and another story to tell. Grounded in between the creative spaces and his subconscious, Rab could vividly recall an expression of someone that he had seen during the day as he went around the city with his horse and cart. And the detail in his artwork was exceptional. It's a wonder teachers never had picked up his gift at school. I suppose no one was there in those early years to see his first sketches on scraps of paper. The fact was, teachers had given up on him too early, and no one was there to encourage him. And now in the twilight years of his life, Belfast Rob had arrived. His love for art almost cut him off from social life, and being passionate about what he did almost spoke to you through the people in his paintings. Rob found he worked better when he drank wine. It made him unwind a bit and relax, and it gave him the ability to focus better on the three-dimensional aspects of his work. As an artist, he lived a lonely life, and that's a call that not many hear. Not many are so inspired as Rab. He had no time for housework, and scattered on the floor of his room lay fragments of dirty clothes, empty tins and bottles and the windows of his bed set were coated by grime, and so the outside world remained unseen. Furniture in the flat was non-existent apart from the mattress on the floor, and with a tea chest for a table and a fruit box for a chair, Rab lived out his life, answering to no one but himself. The only thing that kept Rab going Each day was the hunger for new faces to paint and the desire to find images of his beloved Belfast city. So future portraits pushed him out into the rain and the sleet and the cold to where his horse and his cart waited each day. There was a docker man by the name of Yank, and Belfast Rob paid Yank a small fee to feed the horse and to shoe the grey mare. Yank worked part time as a chanter in some of the old pubs in town, and he was a talented tenor, you know. You could hear as the night drew near his voice echoing around the city streets. He had the rhythm of the city and the rumble of its heart. Yank was a good man, and he looked after Rob's asset, his horse and cart. That's why it was so difficult the day the grey mare died. Yank had to break the news to Rob, but he did it so in a very innovative way. Early in the morning, as the fog still covered the rooftops of Belfast, Yank made his way to Rob's flat. Climbing up the old staircase, he found the landing where stacks of canvases had lay, back to back. He made his way to the door and knocked. Bob... Rab. The door opened with a creak and saw Yank standing there with a big smile on his face and he said, Good morning, Rab. What do you want? Have not already paid you this month? Rab replied. Ah, uh, yeah, you sure, you sure did, Rab, but uh, no problem about that. Well, uh, was the answer that Yank gave. Well, uh, what do you want, Yank, huh? said Rab. I want you to do a portrait of me. Rob was so overjoyed. He had never been asked to do a portrait of anyone before. Oh, well, don't stand there like a beggar. Come in, Yank. Come in and sit down. Rob came in to the flat and pushed the wooden fruit box over. Yank followed close behind. He took out a cigarette and lit it up. Give us a light. Give us a light, Rob. Come on. Rob leaned over and looked into Yank's face. He stood back and checked another profile and eventually he produced a box of matches and lit up Yank's smoke for him. Is the picture for you? Rob asked. No, no, it's for my cousin Michelle. She lives in America. I want to send it over like, oh, it's a Christmas gift to her. You know, she hasn't seen me for ten years or more and I thought maybe it would be a good way to show her that I haven't changed, you know. Rob grabbed an empty canvas and put it on the easel and he grabbed some brushes and oils as if he was inspired with sudden greatness. 
Rob immediately began to dab and stroke and brush out an image onto the frameless board. I'll make it like you're a visitor then, Yank. Hold up this here for me, will you? Rob held an empty wine bottle that uh, he picked up from the floor and passed it into Yank's hand. And Yank took the bottle and held it up and he said, I saw one of those there new trucks in the corn market yesterday, Rob. You know them new uh, DeLoreans? Huh? Uh, no, no, Yank. Uh, that's too high. Um, hold it out in front of you, just like you're pouring a drink for somebody. Yeah, that's it, that's it. The new truck I saw, it's got lots of space, and it's even got a radio in it, Rob. Rob continued to dab away. It was as if he was in a trance. Uh, that cousin of yours in America, uh, is she older than you? Yeah, yeah, just by a few years. She tells me everybody drives a car over in America, Rob. Do you know what I think? That small truck would be just great for you and your business, Rob. Rob just looked into space, and he didn't really pick up what Yank was trying to say. And then suddenly he stopped. The penny must have dropped. He dropped the boy, brush on the floor and looked at Yank. It's the mur, isn't it? He said. Yank walked over and looked into Rob's bloodshot eyes and said, I found her this morning. On the brink of tears, Rob said, so, she snatched it. Had it in her notice then. There's nothing you could have done, Yank replied. Rob walked out of the flat, out into the street, and Yank walked over and had a look at the painting. When he saw the work, he could hardly believe his eyes. The image of Yank standing on a ship, holding a torch like the Statue of Liberty, and behind them was the New York skyline. Perfect. Yank just smiled, and he knew that Rob needed some time alone, and so he remained in the bed sit until he came back. But during the time Rob was away, Yank checked out all of the canvases in and outside the flat, and he was so impressed by what he saw that he called in an art dealer, who was so impressed that he called in a few directors of art museums around the city. About a week or so later, when Rob returned, there was a crowd around the flat. Yank was there and immediately handed him a bundle of banknotes. Ah, uh, Rob, this is just a deposit. Just a deposit. <laughs> What's going on, Yank? I had to tell him about you, Rob. I had to tell him your work's too good to be lying here gathering dust on a filthy old London undiscovered. Please, let them show you your real talent let the, your work needs to be brought around so people can appreciate it rob rob stood in shock you mean somebody likes my paintings and rob was amazed and yank started to laugh <laughs> like your paintings <laughs> Your entire collection is lined up for a new master's expedition. Exhibition in New York, London and Paris. You're famous. An international art director walked into the room, came over and shook hands with Rob and promised a viewing in all the major cities in the world. He looked into Rob's eyes and said, uh, The thing is, you're going to be famous. Now the rest of the story is history. Belfast Rob became one of the world's greatest artists and in turn Rob became a very very wealthy man indeed. Tourists from every corner of the globe these days flock to admire the work. And how ironic that this new genius in the art world had just now been discovered by many but yet had been overlooked for years and people regarded him as hopeless and under achievement was always the tag that was placed on him as a boy. And as a young boy, no one really understood Rob. But now, it didn't really matter anymore. He had made it. The end. <laughs>